Hello everyone, back to you today's second video, doing CFS 6 months, look ahead for today's uh, second video, so it does exactly what the name says on the tin, uh, we're going to go 6 months ahead with the long range CFS V2 model, and it's just for fun, it's just a bit of a laugh really to see what the uh, CFS model is showing for the next 6 months, it'll take us from... Uh, sort of next month, April, right way through to September. Uh, so through rest of spring, through summer, and just about to the start of um, the autumn. So, I mean, obviously the first month or two, if a model's working as it should do, then um, there's a little bit of merit in that part of the update. So sort of April, May. Yeah, there's a little bit of merit there. Maybe model, hopefully, anyway, will have a, have an inkling about what may happen in the next month or two. But as you go sort of three, four, five, six months away, no, it's just a snapshot. It's just a bit of fun, a bit of a laugh, see what the model is um, showing. So we're going to have a look at CFS uh, 700 bit of our height anomalies first. Then we'll have a look at the corresponding temperature and precipitation anomalies that go with those heights. And we'll just um, have a bit of fun and see what they're showing for uh, the spring and the summer. So, so to say that uh, today's first video was Week Air Forecast, you can find that video here on the homepage, just scroll down the page a little bit, and it's both so desk. There's also a written version, you can get back from the buttons at the top of the page. There will be snow in the next uh, day or so, so have a look at that and see all of the latest. Right, so we'll begin by having a look at the 700 millibar height anomalies for the next six months. We're going to start in April. So as I was explaining, it's only one month away. Hopefully, if the model has things correct, then this is the most reliable part of the CFS six months dog head. Bear in mind, blue's extrapolating to below average heights, which is low pressure, and yellow, orange, and red extrapolating to above average heights, which is high pressure. So we find that we've got an area of below average heights being predicted over Scandinavia uh, for, uh, for April with um, below average heights up there. There's not a lot else to go on, but you would have thought if there's uh, below average heights over Scandinavia, we're likely to, at the very least, be bringing in sort of a northwesterly type flow and therefore you will think there's going to be some sort of ridge here in the central atlantic so a bit of a mid-atlantic ridge so the jet stream uh may be doing something uh, a little bit like that going in that sort of an arc and uh so the upshot of that would probably be for a fairly cool month maybe not overly unsettled because we are blocking off the atlantic quite a bit so i wouldn't have thought especially wet but um maybe a little bit on the cool side uh there for april to start us off then we go through to May, and quite a significant change takes place in May. So the below average heights have gone up to the north, up here. And then we've got above average heights setting up over and just to the east of the UK. And so this could be a much better month, because this would send the jet stream up there. We go on to the mild side of the jet stream. With this ridge close to us, would we'll be reasonably dry. And we would also be pulling up the air from a more sort of southerly type uh, direction so that could be a much much better month in may so a cool uh, a cool signal for april but for may maybe uh, a little early taste of summer perhaps with um really quite a uh, a dry and fairly warmish signal perhaps in uh may and now we're at month three so obviously reliability is falling away a lot we're getting into the realm of it being just the fun. But this is how things look in June. We begin the summer of 2018 with above average heights uh, to the north of the country and an area of below average heights in the middle of the Atlantic. Otherwise, again, there's not a huge amount else to go on. It all looks rather slack, but you would have thought we'd probably bring the jet stream through the country. So a relatively unsettled month could be on the way for June. We'll know more when we look at the temperature and precipitation anomalies that go with those heights. Because from a height uh, pressure perspective, there's not much really to go on. But... I don't think that's a particularly good anomaly, I have to say. And I would suspect, when we have a look at temperature and precipitation, it'll look rather poor. 
And then a deterioration further takes place into July. Now, the same grace with this is that we're at month four, so it's nothing to be overly concerned about. But this is how July is looking, with below average heights just to the west-northwest of us. Uh, Ridge is out in the middle of the Atlantic, a long, long way away from us, not able to do a great deal for us. And so the jet stream is just doing something like that. Uh, that looks really quite cool and unsettled as we go through into July. And a further deterioration into August. Look at this. We've got an area of below average heights just over and to the west of the country. No real sign of the Azores high at all. It must be there, but it must be pushed off uh, into the middle of the Atlantic. There's a hint of a little bit of northern blocking going on up here uh, as well. All looking like very, very poor signs uh, for August. With the jet stream again coming through the country, leading us to be on the cold side of the jet, or the cool side of the jet as it's summer. And uh, just unsettled and potentially uh, really cool conditions as well. And then September sort of rounds it all off. And, uh, well, if you think that the CFS model never predicts cool weather, it looks like really from June onwards, all of these charts... And there's April as well, uh, pointing to really quite cool conditions. Now we've got that area below average heights to the east of us. Um, that's the Azores Heights in a very long way from us, not able to do much. So again, the jet stream is like that. It just looks like a real write-off, really. Once uh, May is out of the way, May might be okay. But once that's out of the way, it looks like a bit of a write-off, I have to say, from June through to September. Um, and as I say, the saving grace of this is that it's all in the part of the update that's just for fun. Not really it is a great deal of fun if you want uh, decent weather for um, uh, for the summer. But, I mean, it's in the unreliable part, so it's not, not to be overly alarmed about. But uh, if it's right, we are in for a very poor summer indeed, I would suggest, looking at those heights. But let's confirm it. Let's have a look at the precipitation and temperature anomalies. We begin with the temperature anomaly for April. So in April, we've got that trough that centred uh, to our northeast. Let's just get rid of that and uh, try and start again. So in April, we've got that trough that's centering itself in that sort of position. Uh, and so we think the jet stream is going to be doing something a bit like that, going on the northwest uh, southeast trajectory, which is going to place us um, in a northwesterly flow, which is not going to be overly uh, warm. The coldest anomaly is to average across Scandinavia and northeastern parts of Europe, but for us, we're coming out sort of average to a little bit cooler than average. A relatively cool month being predicted there uh, in April. And that's how May looks. And May is a little bit better. Certainly across many parts of uh, continental Europe, we're going uh, milder than average through France, into Germany, into the low countries. In the UK, we're a little bit on the edge of that. So um, nothing to get excited about, perhaps. But it certainly has warmer prospects in May compared to April. I think that's quite clear, not just in the UK, but for much of northern central uh, Europe. It does look uh, like we have some warmer prospects coming through there. But then we go through to June, and it all goes a little bit flimsy. So for southern parts of uh, Europe down here, we're not doing too badly for temperature anomalies down there. But for northern Europe, well, it's a very weak signal in June. But it looks rather average to cool, you would have to say. Um, not a strong signal, but certainly, again, nothing to suggest uh, June is going to be a particularly uh, warm month. And that continues into July. So, again, very weak signals, um, nothing really definitive. But, again, you have to say there's no sign of anything especially warm away maybe from the far east of Europe over here. Anyway, it's just looking rather average to a little bit cool um, in June and July. And this continues into August as well. So August, again, we're not really seeing signs of anything particularly warm happening. Uh, we've got some warm and average temperature anomalies going on up there. Iceland is significantly warmer than average. 
southeastern parts of Europe, a little bit warmer than average there. But to be honest, for much of northern, central, western Europe, UK included, overall it looks like, if anything, we're probably a little bit on the cooler side, but it's not a big anomaly. But all three summer months look very weak with the temperatures, and if anything, probably favouring the cooler than average side and september just rounds it all off so bear in mind this model is nearly always forecasting warmth on steroids it's nearly always forecasting very warm conditions to average uh not just for the uk but for most of europe and we're not seeing that with this update whilst we're not seeing a really strongly cold signal away from scandinavia and northeast europe in april anyway we're not seeing that for this model, this is a very cool update, if you see what I'm trying to say. Now, as as I said, the only saying, I have to keep repeating this, is that uh, all of these summer charts and to September are within the unreliable part of this. The more reliable part is April and May. April is suggesting rather cool, whether May is suggesting a fairly decent month, I would have thought. Uh, so, again, nothing to be overly alarmed about, but the signals are really quite poor uh, for the summer. And um, then finally got precipitation anomalies, so coming back to uh, April. This is what we see for the precipitation anomaly in April. It's a very weak signal. Um, now, maybe a little bit surprisingly, central parts of Scandinavia are coming out a bit dry on average, despite that, that the model, uh, in terms of its height anomaly, wants to have a trough around here. So I'm not quite sure how that's working out. Um, the jet stream is going through in that sort of direction. For the UK and for Ireland, we're just close to average, not a particularly strong signal for precipitation in April. Uh, May does look better. So not only is much of Northern Europe on the warm side in May. Much of Northern Europe is also on the drier side in May as well. Um, for the UK, well, it's average for England and Wales, but it's driving average for Scotland. I think May is looking like a decent month here uh, after what could be a rather cool and rather dodgy April. It's possible May could unleash some really quite, uh, or could release, I suppose I should say, some uh, really quite uh, warm and dryish weather. June doesn't look too bad either, so um, a little bit unsure about June. From the heights, there's not a lot to work with. The temperature is anomaly uh, poor in June, uh, and the precipitation anomaly isn't a, a huge amount to work with either. But if anything, you'll probably suggest we're a little bit on the dry of an average side uh, for much of Northern Europe in uh, June. But then look at that, July goes substantially wetter than average for most parts of the UK. So if we get something decent in May and stretch it into June, by July, any thoughts of that have well and truly gone. And uh, we just look very unsettled. There's low pressure sitting just to the west of us. The jet stream is going through like that. So it just looks very unsettled. Uh, and really quite cool, I would have thought, in July. And this continues to August as well. Both July and August coming out with above average um, rainfall anomalies for the UK and for Ireland, depicting a very unsettled uh, second half to the summer. And then finally, September rounds it all off. So uh, in September, we uh, send that trough to our east, um, so it turns a little bit drier across the far west of Europe. But overall, again, pretty cool and pretty unsettled looking in September. That is six months away, so it's just for fun. That's the last time I'm going to say that for this month's CFS six months. Okay. So coming back to sum it all up, um, and in the more reliable period, which is April and May, April is looking like a rather cool uh, month. Not overly wet, because I think we block off the Atlantic a little bit in April, but it does look um, uh, a pretty cool month. May could be the best of it. It might be we have an early summer uh, so a pretty warm and dry uh, possibility for May. Uh, May as you go into the summer months, uh, and uh, it looks pretty bad, I have to say. June, we might stretch some of that warmer and drier weather that we have in, uh, April, in May. We might stretch it into June, but overall it looks like a rapid deterioration takes place through the summer 
Um, and uh, maybe it's going to be a case that summer this year happens in May and it all goes down the pan. I think that's how um, the summer of 2008 turned out. There was a very warm May associated with 2008. And then after that, it was downhill all the way for the rest of the summer. But I wouldn't necessarily say uh, anything definitive about that because... It's a long way out, and this model, we know it is very much subject to chopping and changing. So we just need to wait and see, uh, really, how uh, that works out. All right, so that's seven six we we'll get done. We've done the weekend forecast as well. So uh, there may be an update coming up later on today. Just keep checking back to the website. But uh, at 15 minutes, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.